Ajaman Ochidako, the program that brings you thematic issues on higher education issues all over the African continent. And in today's episode, we're, we're discussing positioning the AAU for enhanced visibility and relevance. You know, the AAU is the APES higher education institution established in 1967 um, to ensure the, the mission towards enhancing the relevance of higher education issues in the African continent. And we've had over 11 uh, Secretary Generals, and to now I'm very privileged to have with me the current Secretary General for the Association of African Investors and the personal professor Olushola Oyewele. And he is well endowed in the issues of higher education, and I know you can't wait to find, find out more from him and what he has to bring on board to ensure that the AAU stands relevant and, 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 and full of capacity to, to impact. Don't go in or go for a show. When we come back, I'll let you know who he is, and we'll just go to discussions. Don't go anywhere. You're welcome back to AAU Talks. My name is Ajiman Ochodako, and today I have with me a professor of food science and technology and also one of the senior experts in higher education who served with the African Union Commission in the person of Professor Olusha Loyelwele. Prof, you're welcome to AU Talks. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here. Nice being with Out you. Out of your busy schedule, you've had time to be with me here because yeah. it's very important. It's a pleasure. It's part of the assignment. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Let's look at um, today's topic was about positioning the AU for enhanced visibility and relevance. Um, for the very first day when you, we, we saw you as um, the newly appointed SG, uh, we saw that you were bringing on board a whole new game plan to enhance partnership and collaborations for the AU as one of the strategic ways to put back the AU on, 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 on block. And I'm glad to have you here. Let's start with something about you. I know you, you were a professor in food science and you've come this far. What, what do we know about you? Okay, my name is Olushola Oyewali. Okay. I'm a professor of food science and technology. I've been connected or associated with African higher education for the past 35 years. Great. I really started as an assistant lecturer at the then College of Science and Tech, University of Lagos, that later becomes the uh, University, Federal University of Agriculture at Biokuta yeah. in Nigeria. I became a full professor 20 years ago. Uh, within the past few years, apart from teaching and doing research in the university, I've had the opportunity of coming to over to the Association of African Universities between 2006 and 2009 when I served first as the uh, project officer okay. for the World Bank project on quality assurance for all universities in Africa. And then I move over to the another project called Mobilizing Regional Capacity Initiatives, okay. whereby universities in Africa are empowered to produce, I mean, to do research that are relevant to development. Mm -hmm. From there, I move over to the African Union Commission in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, we are serve as a senior expert on higher education Great. and was in charge of the one limon Yerere scholarship scheme the african quality rating mechanism as well as some other projects involving higher education in africa Great. indeed during that time we talk about promoting mobility of uh, higher education st uh, candidates students and teachers mm -hmm. across african discipline okay. our intention then was that we should not be looking up to the north for collaboration. Okay. How can universities in Africa collaborate among themselves mm. and how can they be relevant to the development of Africa? Okay. What can we do with our young people so that when they graduate, they, are, they have possess the skills and the competencies that can help them to survive in our environment and then contribute to our development? Mm. Thank you very much. And here I am now. Yeah. After that, I found myself back at the University of Agriculture at in 2012 when I became the vice chancellor. I was the vice chancellor from uh, May 12, 2012 to May 13, 2017. Mm -hmm. And following that, I'm here as the Secretary General of AU. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned earlier on, beyond uh, being a vice chancellor, I've also been associated in providing leadership for AU. I was the president of AU between 2013 and 2017. Great. So really coming to an atmosphere that I know so much and getting ready to contribute to the advancement of higher education in Africa. It takes, a lot, it takes a lot of passion for, for yeah. one to, to, to come back and then support. But let's, let's now start with, uh, you mentioned about the youth 
yeah. the African continent and how they can be positioned to contribute to the continent's growth yeah. through higher education. You know, we have over 60 percent of our population in the African continent as, young, as youth, mm -hmm. so it's a young population over here. What is your what's your idea about it? Where should we position these young people? Where should they be much more intensified effort to grant them that skill uh, uh, ability in education? Is this a basic level, senior level, or higher education level? Where do you think that we should put in more effort to, to grow them in skills? I think effort should be put on all the cadres of education. Okay. From the primary to the secondary to the tertiary. The quality of the student that you have at the tertiary level depends on the quality of the students coming in from the secondary school level. I also believe that university education today we need a, should be changed in one way or the other. Okay. When higher education got introduced into Africa, yeah. the intention was to produce uh, civil servants, mm -hmm. manpower for the, for, I mean, for the government. Things have changed today. Okay. Our focus needs to be changed. We need to retrain, I mean, to refocus our young people to acquire skills and competencies that can help them to drive development in our nation. So the intention today is not for students to go, our young people to go to university so that they can become civil servants. The intention is for them to be able to create jobs. The intention is for them to be able to think and be able to meet the challenges of today. Mm. In your recent uh, encounter, uh, uh, interview or let's say discussion with the Minister of Edu for Education in Ghana, yeah. uh, he shared with you about how he also focuses on strengthening or widening the gap for students to get the opportunity to higher education institutions. Yeah. But he also expressed some displeasure by the fact that uh, as we open the gate for students to move or tra uh, transcend from senior high school to universities, there is a need to also enhance infrastructure and all more innovative ways of delivering higher education in the sectors. I know you're sharing that same um, concern. What is your view on massifying higher education with the issue of enrollment, gross social enrollment, widening, and the issue of quality of education in this same area? I quite believe that we need to increase enrollment. Mm. The percentage of people transitioning from the secondary school to the university in Africa is rather low. Okay. And we cannot use that low number to drive for the uh, development of our content of our countries. Mm -hmm. I also believe that it's not just acquiring degrees. It's about empowering yourself, acquiring the skills that can help you to deliver. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is this, our focus is not just to give our young people degrees. We need to give them quality education, quality education that can bring their innate abilities within them and help them to be innovative for development. Mm -hmm. I talk with people talk about massification that we are encouraging a large number of people mm -hmm. to get into the university system. Yeah. It's not really a challenge. Mm -hmm. The real challenge we have is that many countries in Africa appears not to be ready mm -hmm. for the large number of youths that are going into tertiary education today. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, facilities, infrastructures for teaching that people have been using probably 20, 30 years ago, appears to be the same thing that are there even when we have large numbers of students sure. coming to the same. Sure. We surely need to change some things in our system. Yeah. The mode of teaching surely need to be changed. Mm -hmm. In the past, if, you've been, if you were in the university 20, 30, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. is whatever your teacher t tells you it's what that you, you believe. Yeah. So our t mode of teaching then was too teacher-centered. Now, for our young people to be innovative, we need to change that mood. Mm -hmm. Our teaching system now should be, star, I mean, learner-centered. Mm -hmm. Allow the students to, t to learn, to t I mean, to learn. Yeah. The student, the learner may even have something to teach the teacher sure. in the new system. Sure. And two, uh, at least the pandemic has taught us that it's not just when you sit before a teacher That's that right. you learn, there are other modes of learning. You can do it through virtual means. You can stay in your home and be learning. Mm -hmm. And then we should encourage lifelong learning mm -hmm. so that you don't say that you've graduated from the university and that's the end of your learning. Yeah. There will be new things that you need to learn. Mm -hmm. Indeed, my own advice to our young people is that after graduating, tell yourself where you are going in life. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what do you need 
to become what you want to become in life. Mm -hmm. And also ask yourself, what are the skills that you need to become that person that you want to become? Mm -hmm. And then focus on it. You know, Prof, some of these issues that you, you underlined, we yeah. have issues of um, uh, funding. Uh, as we uh, enhance or uh, widen the issue of uh, enrollment, yeah. we also think about funding. But this is one, one question that has not been really, um, what I say, has not been really dealt with in terms of yeah. providing ways and means, a source of funds for these uh, issues. Funding is a big challenge in Africa. Yeah. One, we still need to convince governments in Africa on the need to put money into education. Mm. There's still the challenge of funding. In some countries in Africa, they tell you they provide free education. Mm -hmm. Whereas the government is not putting that money mm -hmm. to universities for them to really provide the quality education that students need. Yeah. I think we still need to speak with our government. One, let them know the relevance of higher education for our development. Mm -hmm. Our government, our people should be know, made to know that answers, solutions to the challenges of our continent will come from our own people who can think who can look at the problems and give solutions. Mm. So, higher government should support higher education in Africa. Mm. Government should also support our young people mm. so that they acquire quality and relevant education for their development. Mm. You know, moving from government support, let's come to the AAU, which yeah. is one of uh, the, the, the body ensuring the relevance of yeah. higher education in Africa. Yeah. You have played a mechanical role in the AAU as board member, as president, yeah. and, and also as you now. We have many programs at AAU, the MADEVs, the leadership development programs, workshops, corridors, all trying to ensure, just advocating for the relevance of higher education. What role or what other role do you think the AAU has to play to ensure that we really get this vision achieved? One, AAU is a membership organization. Mm -hmm. We have responsibilities to our member universities. Okay. And it's a, an organization where we bring universities together for them to ruminate on challenges facing universities and facing higher education generally, okay. and then prefer solution. Okay. Right now, with the pandemic in place, our universities have really not prepared themselves for the current challenges facing universities or tertiary education. Okay. Our mode of teaching we need to change. And for our mode of teaching to change, the teachers too, we need to be empowered. The students too, we need to be empowered. For us as AAU, mm -hmm. all we are doing is to empower our member institutions so that they will be able to serve the society as they should be. We draw the attention to issues connected with higher education and we bring people together to discuss on those issues and provide solutions. Mm -hmm. We create fora whereby people can share ideas on what to do to promote development. Mm. What specific programs has the AAU rolled out that wow. really speaks to these uh, solutions? One, we've, been, we've created, we've organized so many uh, webinars whereby we look at issue of quality of higher education in Africa. We look at digitalization of higher education. We've also created forum whereby we talk about quality of research and relevance of research to development. Mm -hmm. We've also created opportunities whereby we bring in the learners for them to come and tell us their expectations of their institutions mm -hmm. so that the institutions themselves can ensure that their progress are relevant to the needs of, their young, of the young people. Great. If you just join us, I'm here with Professor Olushola Oyewele, uh, Secretary General for the Association of African Universities, and we're discussing positioning the AAU for enhanced visibility and impact relevance. Don't go anywhere. We'll go for a show. When we come back, we'll be talking more about his vision to position the AAU. Stay with us. We're right back on AAU Talks. My name is Ajiman Ochudaku, and I'm here with Professor Olushola Oyewele, Secretary General for the Association of African Universities. And Prof, we've already talked about the, the issues uh, that we face in the continent and the AAU's um, role that we're playing to ensure that we also uh, provide a solution to the issues. But let's come to your strategy. Before you came on board, one of the thematic um, things that you pointed to was that the AAU needs visibility 
and needs more enhancements and that is in the area of restoring integrity and also collaborations and partnerships let's see how you seek to roll this out yeah and how did you come up with this from, from afar yeah. I, would, I, would, uh, I would tell you this 11 years ago mm -hmm. i was at the african union commission mm -hmm. where i was serving as a senior expert on higher education splendid at that particular time mm -hmm. we were concerned about the quality of higher education yeah and our strategy for that is that we feel that institutions themselves should drive their own quality assurance programs mm. and at the african union commission we came up with the idea of the african quality rating mechanism that was a tool that institutions can use in checking their own quality and correcting themselves that was 11 years ago yeah now 11 years later i'm here in au aau association of african universities is no longer in that driver's seat some other people are now driving that move. I feel that that should not be. Mm -hmm. AAU is the lead agency for the African Union Commission mm -hmm. on issues of higher education. Yeah. We should be on the driver's seat. Okay. We should be the one identifying the challenges and preferring solutions. We should be the one promoting collaborations and partnership among the various stakeholders in the continent. And that's why when I came in, I said, one, centrally AU alone cannot do it mm -hmm. we need to partner with others we need to collaborate we need to ensure to put on mechanisms whereby universities share ideas whereby universities come together whereby we compare our notes and we look at the challenges that we are facing we're almost facing the same challenge all over and we have similar solutions to all of them mm. and uh, that's why i said AU, one we are going to promote partnership yeah we are going to promote collaboration. Okay. We want to give voice to the academics in African institutions. Mm. We want governments to recognize the, their need of higher education. We want research being done in Africa to be relevant to their people. Situations in the past whereby researchers in Africa do research all for the purpose of publishing. Mm -hmm. And that is all. Mm -hmm. Should not longer be there. Mm -hmm. We should be re do research that can move our development. We should ensure that government create uh, means through which research is funded. Those are the issues that AU is pushing, and we are going to continue with that so that our higher education systems are relevant to our development. Great. No, you, you began uh, with this great move, but I'm very curious to find out from you. Uh, with these challenges that you face, are some challenges that have you have you seen some to be quite inevitable and quite unattainable with all you seek to do? Uh, are there some glary issues? I think for well, looking at the terrain that we're in and then what I came to see in terms of bringing partnerships or enhancing partnerships, there are some hurdles that I think perhaps we, we can't really cross. Have you seen anything like that so far? Uh, hurdles. That's why we are here. We are here to solve problems. We are here to overcome challenges. Mm -hmm. And I, in coming in, I do not, uh, I, I mean, I was not coming in with the expression that there will not be challenges. Sure. Challenges are meant to be solved. Yeah. And I want to tell you that people are waiting. People are eager to help AU to be what AU is supposed to be. Institutions are looking up to AU. We need to be in conversation with them regularly. And that's why since I came, the issue of the membership of AU is one of the things I've put my attention on. Mm -hmm. I believe that people should not just be members of AU only for them to attend a conference once in a year. I believe that AU should communicate regularly mm. with the institutions. Yeah. AU should prove its relevance to our institutions. So that if you are not a member of AU, you should be missing mm. and you should be desiring to join us. Mm. Okay, let's see how you want to, how, how that will be done. We need your policymakers. You, you met with the Minister for Education. That is one of, I think, the standard That's one of the strategy. Check mark yeah. to build that connection and also look forward to other stakeholder engagements. How do you seek to do this with the issue of policymakers in the African continent, the private sector, also very integral role to the AAU, and uh, the, the academic, the diaspora as well, and other stakeholders? How do you seek to take it up with them and build that mental relationship? One, uh, the strategy is to allow them to come together. Mm -hmm create fora whereby they can talk to each other yeah 
grateful that whereby people can see your sincerity, your readiness to make a change. And in the past, we, we, within the past few weeks or months, we've had programs in AU where universities come together to discuss, not just discussing on collaboration alone, but discussing on their methods, how they can improve deliveries on their mandates. Yeah. These are the type of things we do in AU. We cannot do the research, we are not doing the research in AU, but we are getting the people in the university to do the research mm -hmm. and help them to promote the outcome of their research to their society. Great. If, if you were to really um, give us, reiterate your vision for the AAU yes. for the next 20, uh, let's say 20 years, yeah. or let's say five years, what is it for it's the relevance of AAU continentally and globally? Well, how do you want to see us in five years' time? Well, I see as AAU as, an, as a, an organization that is central to the empowerment of higher education institutions in Africa. Mm -hmm. Help them to deliver to their society mm -hmm. for their development. Great. This is a special one. Um, it's from you know, the very the informal sector. Yeah. Uh, quite secluded and kind of obscure uh, sector in the whole of the continent. They, they have not got a chance to also f uh, affiliate themselves to higher education. Yeah. Uh, as the AAU, do we owe some responsibility to them? And if we mm -hmm. do, how well can we connect them and link them in? We AAU owe responsibility to the man on the street. Okay. Because they need education. Mm -hmm. AAU should help governments to know that education is not for the rich. Mm -hmm. AAU should help our society to know that every sphere of education is very important. And therefore, we should contribute, I mean, we should support whatever we make you to become a total man, so to say. Mm -hmm. And you talk of other spheres, the private sector, the businessman, the, the what can they do? Right now, we're in an age of innovation. Mm -hmm. We're an age where people know that the, your currency today is not petroleum, it's your knowledge. Yeah. And people, we are trying to let people know that the knowledge that you know and apply is what you need for our development. Great. Let's say a good conversation about end. So uh, you know, we, we can't have so much time with Prof. He, he has to go and then continue his job. But Prof, you have the community waiting for you, the stakeholders out there watching you. Yeah. Uh, which message do you have for them? Expect from you with the AAU and how you want to drive it to achieve the goal that you've stated. I want our stakeholders to know that AAU belongs to them. Sure. AAU is relevant, I mean, is available to serve them. Mm. I want all our universities and other tertiary education systems to know that with AAU, we shall meet the challenges facing higher education at this time. And especially now that we're in the pandemic, we are overcoming the pandem pandemic by the power of God. Yeah. And hopefully, our young people, for whom institutions, higher education institutions have been established, will be enhanced so that the quality of graduates coming from our institutions will be relevant to the society. Great. We believe that we need to help our youth so that they acquire the skills and the competencies that can help them to overcome the challenges of life. Great. Thank you. Great. We're glad to hear, we're glad we had you here in our studios and IAE talks. And then um, I, I forgot to mention that Prof is a father figure and uh, he's also a man of God. So as he said, <laughs> with the power of God, that will happen. Mm -hmm. But we thank you so much for having time on AE Talks to share with us your vision and also how you seek to transform the African continent, your capacity as AE Secretary General. And we're looking forward to also support you, the entire AU, support you with all our best, our knowledge and strength so that this vision will be actualized. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you also for watching us on AE Talks today. We had a special and exc exclusive one with Professor Olusha Laoye Wale, Secretary General for the Association of African Universities. And we look forward to bringing you more interviews on, on AE Talks that talks about thematic issues on higher education in Africa. Keep watching us. Have a nice day and bye.